Blog Talk Radio. Across the country and around the world, streaming live on the internet, it's Real Estate Coaching Radio, bringing you the latest news, interviews, and secrets of the top producers. Hosted by award-winning real estate coaches, Tim and Julie Harris. Welcome to Real Estate Coaching Radio. Today, we're joined by Jade Mill, the number one top-ranked Coldwell Banker agent in the United States in 2012, serving the West Los Angeles area, including the elite Beverly Hills, Bel Air, Holmby Hills, Brentwood, Pacific Palisades, and Hollywood Hills real estate markets. Jade has 30 years of real estate experience, an elite clientele of some of the biggest names in Hollywood, and in 2011, she was named International Ambassador for Coldwell Banker in recognition of the international alliances she's forged and the launch of Jade Mills World, her international luxury real estate brand. In the world of real estate, Jade Mills means luxury, and she's built an organization with an uncompromising dedication to superior service and an intimate knowledge of the Los Angeles area's most exclusive markets, which has grown into an international luxury brand specializing in premium real estate sales and service. Now to your host, Tim Harris. Jade, welcome to today's call. I really appreciate you being my co-host and today's superstar. Thank you so much, Tim. It's an honor for me to be with you. Thank you very much. So, you know, I was reading a lot of your profile information, and, um, you know, you have an incredibly impressive background, not just professionally, but, you know, also personally. So tell us about your background. In addition to building one of the nation's most exclusive real estate uh, brands, you're also, you've also raised a, a family with four children, been involved in a great deal of charity and community work. How do you juggle all those responsibilities and still manage to achieve such stellar success year in and year out? Well, it's difficult. <laughs> my children always say, oh, my gosh, Mom, I have to make an appointment with you. But if there's something special, if there's my son goes to, my youngest son goes to Baylor and plays basketball for Baylor. So if there's a game and if there's any way to jump on a plane, I'm there. So for anything that, that they really want me to come to, I'm always there. And as far as the charity work is concerned, I feel so grateful uh, about where I am today that I feel like I really need to give back. And I love children's charities. And I, I, I just, it's hard. It's really hard to juggle. But I think you just have to have boundaries with work and have boundaries with with responsibilities and juggle. It's all about juggling. Well, just so our listeners understand, you're not only Caldwell Banker's number one agent, but you're also the number two agent in the entire country in terms of uh, dollar volume. And I would say probably, arguably, you're the number one agent in the nation because you are running what would be a more traditional uh, real estate business, albeit one specifically for the high end. So I'm curious, do you feel competitive pressure to maintain the kind of production required to be at the top of the Caldwell Banker organization? What's that feel like to be at that very top position? Well, of course, I love being where I am. I came from, my dad was a dairy farmer, and I came from a very small town, Alamo, California, which is in Northern California, and I feel very blessed. I feel that being a top agent, I mean, Chris Cortazzo and I um, are the top, he's in Malibu, I'm in Beverly Hills, and for, for a few years now, we've been one and two and two and one and back and forth, but mm -hmm. I think that it's more than being number one. I think it's doing the best for your clients and and knowing that you are going to get referrals because you've done an amazing job. And I love being at, at the top of my field. I'd like to stay there. Um, and I think that the way that you achieve that is by doing the right thing. So how, how long did it take for you to build your real estate business focused on the luxury segment? How Did you start out that way, or did it just evolve that way? Well, I started felt? out uh, – I've had my real estate license for many years, since about 1975. But when I married my second husband, I didn't work until about 1999, I guess that was. And so 2000, I really went back into real estate full force. 
And I, of course, you have to start over. Every time you're out of the business for two years, three years, you have to start over. So I had my children's schools, and I really capitalized on trying to do a great job for the the parents of my children's friends. And it was just one referral after another. And my very good friend trusted me with her house. That was one of my first big listings in Beverly Hills. And from then on, it, it just sort of came from that one sale. So I have to say, it, it, it's not that it's easy. and But if you do an amazing job, if you give it your all... Um, luxury real estate is pretty much like selling anything else. You do a great job and you will get those referrals, which our business is all about. You've built what I think could be argued as probably the most um, respected luxury uh, brand um, in the country in terms of you know selling upper-end real estate, the very top of the summit. I, I, in your, uh, do you find yourself turning down listings? I'm just sort of curious. Where's the threshold? Are you saying, well, that's not the type of business we do, or how do you go about weighing out what what you pursue and what you don't? Because your time is obviously at a well, premium. It it is, but two of my children work with me, and so um, my son lives in Malibu, and and he works from Malibu to the Palisades. My daughter lives in the Palisades, so she does Pacific Palisades, so she does Pacific Palisades to the 405 freeway, and then she helps me with with almost everything. And then I have uh, Sarah Schwartz, who has been with me for four years, and she is like my right hand. And Stephanie, who's been with me for 10 years in the office. So I have great, great, great support. And then I think your office spoke with Phil, uh, who does all of my advertising in the office. So it, it, I have a great support team. And if it's if it's an, a listing that I need help with, I take someone with me and explain that uh, I will oversee these listings, but I will have someone helping me show them. And it works very, very well. So you're, you are describing what I see to be the next evolution with real estate teams. Opposed to just having a bunch of licensees work under you, you have very focused, high-skilled, highly trained, obviously exceptionally capable agents that work as part of your team, opposed to having a bunch of agents. So did you evolve to that, or is that just something you've always focused on, having more of a cohesive uh, group of people around you? Well, I don't have what they call a team because I don't have buyer's agents except for my children, but I have a great what I call support group because I don't have licensees that, that work with me, and I don't hire other licensees uh, in my office. I, I find that... Um, I lose, I, I, I hate to say this, but I lose control and I must know exactly what's going on and I must know that every client is be, being taken care of the way I would want to be taken care of. So I, I can't manage agents. Um, I would rather have just the people that are very close to me and the people that I know will do the job exactly like I will support me. Well, that makes total sense. It won't surprise you, and you may have already known this, but um, pretty much every single top listing agent in the country doesn't have, and I like how you said it, doesn't have a team. They might, you know, they might have a couple of assistants or they have you know, support folks around them, but they don't focus on building buyer agent teams. And that's, I think, um, something that our industry really needs to pay attention to because there definitely is way too much emphasis right now on agents believing that they have to build these big, monstrous teams with lots of agents running around, where the reality of it is, guys, if you look at folks like Jade Mills, you know, they are doing it the right way, clearly, so maybe you should pay attention. So lead generation, you know everyone likes to talk about lead generation, right? You mentioned centers <laughs> of influence and past clients. Isn't that like always everyone's favorite topic? Isn't, don't they, doesn't everyone, Jade, think that somehow you have some magic postcard that brings you all the business yes. in? Isn't that funny? Right. Some but magic what kind of lead generation? Yeah, I know. <laughs> I know, I know. Well, you know what the truth is? It's sold that way, isn't it? I mean, how many things are you solicited with on a regular basis that's supposedly going to solve all your – but you, really, can we just cut through it? Lead generation, what, what really – what works for you? And, and I have a feeling Networking. you're going to say – there you go. 
networking, 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 networking. And I am a person who loves people and I love my business. So it's very easy for me to go into the grocery store or the pharmacy or walking down the street. I tend to talk to everyone. And I love that. I mean, before real estate, and I'm sure for the rest of my life, that will be something that that I love. I love meeting new people. And and I have more business just from talking to people. I mean, a great quick story for you. Years ago, when I was first starting back in real estate, I went to a charity event, and I was waiting for my car, and there were Lionel and Diane Ritchie standing waiting for their car. And I immediately walked up to Lionel and said, oh, my gosh, I've loved you my whole life, which is true. I mean, I loved Lionel Richie. I loved his music, and I just loved what he was about. And uh, the person that I was with, Joyce Ray, and I ended up selling his house and selling them another house from that meeting at Waiting for the Car. That's awesome. I think, and it certainly wasn't meant to uh, stimulate business that night. It was because I was so excited to see this person that I thought was so wonderful. So of yeah, course, well, when when you when when you speak to people, they say, "Well, what do you do?" I mean, that's just it's it's the natural question. Well, but so, isn't that networking. the bottom line? Yeah, but isn't that the yes. bottom line though? Basically, when you have the mindset of service and you truly are confident with. Uh, you know, your abilities and your skill set, you will feel all the time motivated to talk with folks because you you definitely have a desire to be of service to other people. And I I love your story because it leads perfectly into the next question. Um, So being that you're so close to celebrity constantly, it has to be a majority of your business. Well, what's your take on the emerging real estate celebrities and like million-dollar listing and shows like that? I think that it's great. uh, It's wonderful entertainment and I know all of those people on those shows, and I think that, that it's it's fun. I mean, everybody enjoys watching those, and I have family members call me and say, oh, my gosh, I just saw your friend Josh Flagg. I just saw, you know, this one, that one. I mean, I just think that it's fun. And th- they show, a, a, you know, a, a funny side. Maybe that's not all exactly how it happens. I, I don't know because – Everybody has different clients, but I think I think it's just fun. What are the special needs um, and desires? We, we've coached a lot of and interviewed a lot of the top agents around the country, and a lot of them have worked with a lot of these big, you know, business people, and they have their, you know, uh, essentially their staff in place. And there's all these different stories that you hear. But uh, you know, we have thousands, really tens of thousands of listeners now, and they are all curious. I'm sure. What are the special needs and desires of ultra high end clients that you serve? What are the types of experiences that maybe you have to uh, adapt to that maybe someone's selling in a normal price range, say, you know, 300000 someplace in another part of California. How, how different is that experience? I would say celebrities, and celebrities are a, a, an important part of my business, but um, many times people will say, well, I can't list with you because, you know, I know you only take listings over $15 million and only celebrities, which is not the case at all. Um, you know, we all have what we call bread and butter uh, business, which is across the board. I mean, any price across the board. And, you know, I love working with celebrities, but I also love working with my neighbors and my friends and uh, the the parents at school. And, I, I mean, celebrities and the very, very upper end all tend to want one common thing, and that's privacy. They want no one looking into their pool. They want no one looking over their fence. They They just don't want to be bothered, and especially celebrities. They are so bothered today by the paparazzi and followed and – I mean, it's really funny. You, some celebrities have to design a, a route out of their homes so they're not chased by the, the paparazzi. So I think the the most important, what we look for for celebrities um, and the higher end is privacy. Well, I would think privacy and security too, both of those things combined. Security is big. Security is big. Yeah. So when you're dealing with um, 
upper end buyers buying, you know, $15 million and up properties. Are you dealing directly with them or do you deal with some of their handlers first? It works both ways. Sometimes um, they just want to cut to the chase. They don't want anyone else looking for them. Um, I've had children look for billionaires. They'll send their children. I've had assistants. Um, many times celebrities will say, I want my assistant to look first, and then after they meet me and we look at a few things and they understand that I know what they're looking for, then they'll look with me directly. Um, it, it's totally different for everyone. And I think many times uh, once you establish a relationship and trust with that client, you work with them. That's not to say that after you write an offer for them and after you have an accepted offer for them, then they will turn you over to their business manager, their assistants, and, and they usually will see the deal through. But in the beginning, it, it, could, it could work anyway. You obviously are, you know, again, you've built this really incredible luxury brand in, in one of the most sought-after real estate markets um, in the world. So why do people choose to do business with Jade Mills? What kind of value-added services? When someone's saying, well, you've got to you know, call Jade Mills to list your house or that, she's the only gal in, in, in the you know, Beverly Hills area you want to work with, why is it that you think they specifically seek you out? I think a few reasons. Uh, when I'm referred, the word that I hear the most is integrity. She's very honest. She will not put you into something that she wouldn't buy or that she wouldn't believe in. Um, I think, you know, my dad was a dairy farmer, and my dad used to say when I first started in real estate, he would say, why do you need this, these contracts? I mean, I've done business my whole life on a handshake. Why do you need these contracts? So I, I grew up with with a mother and father who believed in doing the right thing and living by the golden rule and wanting to always do the best job you possibly could. And my father's work ethic was just unbelievable. I mean, he was up at 5 o'clock in the morning and in bed at 10 o'clock at night and just amazingly ethical. And I think that the word I hear most often is, we want to work with you because we hear that you are very honest. So I think that by doing the right thing, I have had so many referrals, and that is the first word I ever hear. Well, absolutely. I, I'm curious, too, and this is something that, uh, you know, this must come up occasionally, too. So you get a, a solicitation for someone wants you to show them properties, and they are in this upper-end price range. Do you do any sort of research on folks before you just meet them at a $15 million house? Or how do you go about actually sifting and sorting some of these interesting leads that might pop up on your radar that aren't a direct referral from somebody you know? Well, today... We have Google. <laughs> so before be, before we go out, even if someone calls to see a property, uh, we are able to look and see who they are and where they live. I mean, you can find almost anything about people. So in the very upper end, that, that is the first thing we do. And um, many of our sellers will say, did you vet the client? Have you checked them out? Do you know they have the money? And today, it's a pretty easy thing to do. Um, it used to be very, very difficult, but we always used to say it only takes one phone call because you you can call someone that is in the same field or you can call someone who lives in Santa Monica and the house is in Santa Monica. Uh, I mean, it's it's everybody is sort of just a phone call away. But now that we have Google, it's made everything very very easy. It's the same, I think, Tim, when you're going on a listing appointment and you know someone who knows these people. Many times, I will pick up the phone and say. Um, Alicia, I'm going on an appointment, and I know you know the Scots. Would you mind calling them and and telling them that you know me and that you know what I've done in the past? And people are really happy to do that. So many times, 
you can call and you can have someone give you a, a referral that you that that you really didn't even know you were going to get. But it's just it just takes a little bit of thought. You know, Jade, that's actually very uh, – that's an excellent idea. So if you guys didn't, weren't listening and didn't hear what she said, prior to going on a listing appointment, if you know the seller is probably connected with some other folks that you've done business with or folks that are in your centers of influence past client list or your friends or family, have them call you ahead – have them call that prospective seller or even buyer for that matter and then give you a little testimonial – um, to help encourage that prospective client to work with you. I think that's a great, simple idea, but I love it. It's, I love the elegance of it. So you were, recently it given a, you were recently given a huge honor, international spokesperson for Caldwell Banker. Wow. I mean, that's quite an honor. What kind of responsibilities is that? Well, I, I have – I want to be friendly – and I want to have great relationships with all of the other agents, Cobalt Banker or, or, or otherwise. And so they've given me the ambassador title because they felt that I would be a good ambassador for the company. So I have I, – I don't think there's any better way ever to have other agents help you show your listings, assist you in selling your properties than having a wonderful relationship. I try not to have any bad feelings ever with any of the other agents because it is so important to have 25, 3,500 agents in your area who are supporting you and selling your listings. And I know that people will call me and say, oh, gosh, I don't want to call that agent because I may not get a phone call back. And, oh, he's not really very nice to me when I call. And I don't want anyone to ever say that when they call me or when they call my office to make an appointment. I think that doing the right thing with other agents only means that they are going to want to work with you. I've told other agents, you bring me the buyer and we will do the paperwork. We will do everything for you. And that is the other thing, Tim, I think is so important. Many agents, when they go on a listing appointment, will not explain how the process works. We hmm. try to explain on the listing appointment what is going to happen and the sequence of events from signing the listing agreement on down, taking the photographs, having the brokers open house, how when we open an escrow, how we are going to be there for them for everything. We're going to sit with them to do their disclosures. We are going to explain everything. We're going to set up all their inspections. I mean, you must, must, must make it feel like this is going to be a wonderful transaction and experience because this is probably the biggest sale that anyone makes in their lives is their home, buying or selling. Yeah, absolutely. I, you said something I think it's very important. Um, I mean, you said a lot of really important things, but this one in particular is interesting. So you're the you know top of the heap as far as agents, not just in Caldwell Banker, but in the nation. Um, you're in a very, very competitive real estate market, and yet you've been able to maintain the stellar reputation even amongst your peers. So with all that competition, there's a lot of people that you beat out on listings or you beat out on these great buyers. How do you keep it so that these agents don't walk away with their tails between their legs saying, you know, thinking horrible thoughts? How do you – I mean, we have a lot of top agents that are listening right now, and they run into that. You know, the, the comp, natural competition in the real estate market sometimes breeds these little – you know how it is. I don't have to describe it to you. Can you give these guys any advice on how they might be able to smooth things out so that, you know, they can, get, like you said, have the support of the local agents opposed to some of them liking you and some of them not? Well, first of all, I think that there's enough business for everyone, and – Many, many times the top agents in our area, if we know that we are competing against a, another top agent, um, I will call that other agent and I will say, I know that you're going for the Mapleton listing and so am I. How would you feel about teaming up? <laughs> many, many times it, it's, it's a non-issue. And if you team up with another top agent and and you come in very strong, many times 
you just have the listing. They, they won't even interview other people. I've done this with people from other companies, and I've done this with people from my own company. And I always feel that half of something is better than nothing, and I feel that keeping the relationship with another one of your peers and a great agent is more important than one deal. There's no one real estate transaction that is is so important and 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 so uh i i would never want to make bad feelings with another agent over one listing you work well, with those call, agents for years and years that's right well you call them to maybe co-list with you and then hypothetically down the road they're going to reciprocate and maybe call you in on a listing you didn't know about to co-list with them I, you know that's a, that's a brilliant Absolutely. idea and you know it's a, a huge true. home run it's a huge home run for the seller too it is to have two yeah, top seller, agents. And, yeah, yep, it is. It is. Uh, so um, as far as international expansion, I mean, you've built this really uh, impressive uh, business. You've really kind of honed the luxury agent skills. You have these uh, unique qualities that you've uh, been able to make into a, a really powerful business. Is there any international expansion plans, or it, can you somehow take the Jade Mills brand and expand outside of your immediate market? Has that ever crossed your radar? <laughs> Not really. I mean, I feel that I need to do what I do best, and even with the, my now worldwide reach, I'm. We are all over the world. We we've traveled to a lot of different companies. Uh, in different countries and made these great connections. I mean, we have connections all over Europe. Um, I, I just got back from a trip to Berlin, Prague, and London. Um, I have. I, I think that that is absolutely the best way when you go and meet another agent in a, a different place, a part of the world, you know who you're referring to. And you know that if they have a referral here, that they can feel very comfortable giving you that referral. So I, I feel that with our international reach and with exactly what we're doing here uh, in California, I feel that I just don't have the time. And to, to open and to start opening other offices is is not something that I would be interested in doing. Well, I mean, it goes back to what you said earlier about having a bunch of licensees under you that you know that you can focus on what you do best and deliver the best quality service to your uh, your clients. And that's, hey, guess what? That's the reason they come to you, and that's the reason that they know when they call um, your company that they're going to be dealing directly with you. In most cases, I'm sure that's true. So that's, that's true. You know, that's it is interesting, and I'm sure, Jade, I mean, we don't have enough time to talk about it today, but it is kind of interesting how the industry has pivoted towards these big teams. In a lot of cases, that seems to be the emphasis. But the reality of it is is the people that are on the absolute leading edge of um, you know, the industry like you are, they are realizing that that's not the way to go. And really, at the end of the day, folks do business with you because of you. And you know they're going to not do business with you if they feel like they're going to get delegated. Delegation of the... Menial processing task is one thing, but when it comes to the most important process of the listing and the buying and the decision making, they want to be dealing with the with the head dog, the boss. They want to be dealing with the doctor, not the nurse. I mean, so these are all things that you know our industry needs to absorb and realize that maybe the way we used to do business is the way we should be doing business again. So, Jay, that's this right. is the question. One on one. This is a, that's right. I mean, at the end of the day, that's how people become successful long term. So this is a question I like to ask occasionally, and I'd love to hear your answer. So, so why you? Why in, a, in one of the most competitive markets in the country, year in and year out, why you? Why is it that you're so successful? <laughs> well, I had an amazing mother, and my mother told me, I think when I was four years old, for the first time, that I could do anything that I wanted to do ever in my life. And everything you do is in your mind. You can manifest anything that you want to manifest. And if you put your mind to something and you give it your all and you give it your time and your love, I grew up in a very religious family, that you can accomplish anything that you want to accomplish. And I remember at, I think I was 11, selling the Valley Pioneer, which was a newspaper in Danville, California. 
and there was a contest for my organization, organization, which was a little religious group. And I sold the most Valley Pioneers and won $100 for my charity. And my dad at that point said, she is going to be a salesman. I don't know what kind of a salesman, but she's going to be a salesman. And between my mother and father, my mother telling me I could do anything I wanted to do and being, making me very confident in feeling that way, and my father telling me how important it was to do things honestly, I, I think that year after year, that is why I've been able to be successful. I love that. And, and Jade, I really, really appreciate you being our superstar today. It was wonderful hearing you share your stories and all your inspiration. And uh, I hope you know that you are uh, directly right now inspiring you know, tens of thousands of agents. And, and guys, this business is a blessing. People like Jade Mills, you know, obviously – you know, she's an incredible agent, but you guys can experience the same level of success. Don't just listen to her words when you listen to this in replay. Listen to kind of what she, how she's saying things. Listen to how sincere she sounds. I mean, when you're, when you're talking to Jade, even though she's the top agent in the world, probably, I mean, she's a very easy person to talk to. And, and it's not that Thank difficult you, to – Yeah, well, it's true. You are an easy person to talk to. You're fun to talk to. But you have a level of sincerity about you, Jade – that, um, you know, a lot of people think they have to be fake to be successful in the real estate business, especially if we're being honest mm. in your market. They think they have to put on airs. They have to think they have to be somebody else. But here you are, and, you know, you're the daughter of a, of a farmer, basically, and you're somebody who's created your own success. And, guys, that's what people are attracted to. They're attracted to someone who's really sincerely out there wanting to help them. And, uh, you know, the success will follow. Be but you've got to start – yeah, be grateful. Start with a mindset of be service. Grateful. That's, the, that's Go ahead, that's sorry. major. No, that's major. Just uh, you know, give gratitude for what you have. I mean, whether it's one sale or 20, if you if you feel that, I really feel that you can conquer anything. Yeah, that's true. No matter what's going on in your life, basically st- uh, take the time and, you know, think about the things you're grateful for and even more importantly, express to people that have helped you that you need to show gratitude towards. I mean, for example, guys, this interview, you guys should all be sending Jade a nice email or flowers or something to show your <laughs> gratitude towards hopefully how she's made you guys feel. So, Jade, I really appreciate you being my co-host today. I had a wonderful time with you. And uh, listeners, please, your homework from every radio show, and you've helped to make us the number one real estate coaching radio show in the nation is, and I appreciate you guys helping me with this, is share this interview with as many people as you can. Tweet it, reblog it, refacebook it, just send the link to other agents that need the inspiration that only top agents like Jade Mills can deliver. So, Jade, thank you very much, and everyone have a wonderful weekend. Oh, Kim, thank you so much. My best to Julie. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Jade. Bye-bye. Bye. This program has been a presentation by Tim and Julie Harris, Real Estate Coaching. For more information on our real estate coaching and training programs, visit our website at timandjulieharris.com. Remember to tune in weekdays at noon for upcoming shows. And until next time, thank you for listening to Real Estate Coaching Radio with Tim and Julie Harris.